Hey, we need to thank our sponsors of Ask George, Smile Group Travel. We do. Smile are specialists in worldwide sport travel, and this winter they'll be taking England fans to the Caribbean for an exciting white ball series. They really are genuinely amazing in that uh, I've been on trips with them where I ended up in Gordon Greenwich's house where he he cooked for us, uh, told us stories about his um, career, made me drink far more rum than was sensible. He maybe didn't make me. But genuinely, uh, you get experiences which you wouldn't get with every tour operator that I genuinely recommend them. Yeah, that's right. As part of the trip, you'll get to meet and greet famous West Indies and England cricketers of yesteryear at private events. You'll stay in comfort at carefully selected hotels or your travel will be taken care of and you've got dedicated tour managers who just ensure everything runs smoothly for you when you're out there. Yeah, they really are a, a good way of enjoy, enjoying a hassle-free tour with personal touch. And I think there'll be a link in the episode description for you to follow. And they probably won't make you wear the smile hat, which I have to wear throughout this series. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the first Ask George of the Summer, which fittingly is a Headingly washout edition. Okay, first up we have Sushant who asks, what do you make of Joss Butler's international cricket shouldn't clash with the IPL comment? It's interesting, isn't it? It probably tells you where the balance of power in, is in world cricket. I, I think it bears saying that uh, the World Cup was... Um, in the calendar quite some, some time ago. And while there was a basic shape of the IPL, we didn't get the actual dates until quite recently. So it's the IPL, which is encroached on other stuff, actually, uh, except that you've got to have some warm-up time for a global event. But it just tells you how powerful uh, the, the IPL is. And it tells you that the England players are uncomfortable about having been seen to let down their IPL teams. Uh, but I think... Uh, the England management have got it spot on. They needed to get together before the tournament. Uh, they needed to have some role definition and play a few games. I mean, uh, it, 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 is, it was a really interesting comment in that it shows you what the temperature is in world cricket right now, I think. Yeah, he, he obviously did come out and say, which he, he has to, um, that as an England captain, his, his mind is on the World Cup and he wants to get the team together, but it's also... You know, it's a bit muddled by the fact that you said anything at all, I suppose. Yeah, well, I, I, I say again, I, I su expect that he is in a way apologising on behalf of his teammates and saying they had no option because the concern would be among them that the value of English players would go down at the IPL if there's any sort of suspicion that the management are going to take them out of the tournament early. Uh, but I don't think they are very often. I think, you know, we all understand that there's lots of... Um, positives about playing in the IPL but there's also positives about playing as a team getting some role definition getting some time together and defining plans and um, I don't think we need the England captain to be apologetic about the England team taking precedence I don't think any of us should feel apologetic the IPL has uh, a really quite large window in the schedule effectively and um, you know maybe they should define their dates a little bit earlier uh, uh, to avoid this sort of confusion. The, 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 the international calendar, the, the, well, the cricket calendar is absolutely stacked and things like this are inevitable and everything, everybody has to compromise a little bit. Yeah, this leads fairly nicely into the next one from Occidental Tourist. Hindsight is 2020, but would Jack, Salt and Butler be better served playing knockout cricket at the IPL rather than a bilateral series with nothing at stake? No, I don't think so. Uh, I, there, there, there's something in it. I mean, they have been there for quite some time. You know, they have spent several weeks playing there. Um, you say that it's a bilateral series with nothing on it. I mean, bilateral series, I would argue, matter to some extent in themselves. But also, it is the warm-up for the World Cup. There are no warm-up games in the Caribbean for England, OK? So they've got four games, one of which has been rained out. No, I think that's a pretty good use of their time. And I applaud the England management for ensuring they got the squad together. Uh, I mean, wh when did it get to the stage where getting them together a week or 10 days beforehand was seen as in any way excessive? So, no, I think they've got it right. And uh, while there are benefits in playing at the IPL, there are also benefits in the team being together. Uh, back to Sushant and back to Butler. 
Why isn't Butler giving up the gloves to Phil Salt or Johnny Bairstow? Well, the first thing I'd say is, did you see Johnny Bairstow keeping in the Ashes? Um, why? Would, I mean, he could. The full, Phil Salt thing is uh, interesting as well. But why would Joss Butler give up the gloves? I mean, he, you know, I, I'm just going to say rewind to that last moments of the 2019 World Cup again. <laughs> Still makes me nervous. Um, he had a bit more to do than maybe people remember. I think he's done a, a good job. Uh, he did win or, or lead England to victory in the last T20 World Cup as a keeper, batter, captain. And I thought captain very well. So I'm not quite sure why we'd change that. It's really great that they've got uh, other options, but um, I'm not sure that jo um, Jody Bairstow should still be seen as an option after his injury. Um, he's, he's also very good in the outfield. Uh, Phil Salt's a viable option. Yeah, absolutely. He has done a very similar job. Uh, but I think it's legitimate for Joss to carry on in that. I don't see that as one of England's uh, big problems. And if they need to change it, they can. Uh, we've managed to get one in regarding the game last night. And that is from Danny, who asks, how will the washout affect Yorkshire's finances? No, oh, I'm sure that they'll claim it becomes even more essential that the club uh, privatises. But I, I would just remind people that um, Yorkshire's problems go back a long time. I mean, bear in mind there was a reason that Colin Graves lent them 20 million or whatever it was 20 years ago and more. There was a reason. Uh, and you could argue, by the way, that that injection of private finance has been a substantial problem for them. So the people thinking that um, all oh, the injection of uh, private equity into the game is going to be helpful, people are going to want their money. They're going to want to return on their investment. Uh, and actually, it's, uh, yeah, it can create problems of its own. Uh, it is unfortunate. Uh, of course it is. Uh, and of course, they had a game uh, washed out there last year as well. And, you know, it, it, it's horrible for everybody. I, I haven't asked about their particular insurance um, arrangements, but they will be through the ECB. Um, but it's still unfortunate, and it's really unfortunate that people in the area miss out on good quality international cricket, as well as the fact that Pakistan and England don't have the um, um, the, the, the game just ahead of the World Cup that they need. England in particular, Pakistan have been playing anyway. Uh, so it's, it's really unfortunate, and I'm sure it will be used as um, a cudgel to try and beat through the idea of um, uh, demutualization because I'm sure that the next few weeks will be full of scare stories. Well, that's all we've got from this one, a bite-sized version due to the washout. Um, we'll be back for the next three, and hopefully we'll have some quicker to talk about on those. Thanks. See you soon.